Hi everyone, it's World Menopause Day and I think it's actually a day for celebration because there is more and more research going on on menopause and we need as much as we can get because women who are perimenopausal and menopausal, in other words, age 40 and onwards, we make up half of all women. So today I am going to talk with you about brain fog, which is something that a lot of women tell me they have. I know I myself have brain fog, and I thought I'd provide a little bit of insight onto what it actually is. I think some women worry that they've got early onset Alzheimer's or you know, something much more uh, acute or chronic, but uh, brain fog is, I believe, for myself at least, another way of describing hormonal flux. And hormonal flux is something I talk about a lot, and it affects us on a uh, monthly basis as women. And then especially in our 40s, it gets a lot worse. So here's just a, a little bit of a quick tutorial. So here are the days of your cycle typically. And uh, here's what's happening, which is that your hormones are increasing uh, mid-cycle when you're ovulating, uh, and then they decrease, and then they increase again uh, about the third week in your cycle. And so, you know, my, I myself experience hormone flux or brain fog a lot worse, actually, uh, right here when my hormones are surging up. And... A lot of women, possibly most, ex experience the hormone flux or brain fog at the end of your cycle. So right here when your hormones are declining. So I really truly believe it's important as women that we chart our hormone flux and understand when that is happening. You know, when are we actually getting uh, fog or brain flux? Is it for, uh, at the beginning of your cycle up here, like the way I do, I experience it when my hormones are increasing, or is it at the end of your cycle when your hormones are decreasing? And that allows us to understand a lot better how to take control of our monthly cycles. And even um, after menopause, after our monthly cycles stop, which typically is age 51, that's the average age, we're still going to get this type of uh, hormone flux or brain fog because our ovaries are still trying to push out uh, those hormones and those eggs. And so, you know, the, definitely uh, we don't know very much about it, but we do know that uh, our ovaries likely continue making hormones until we're 65. So uh, this is one of my favorite slides, and it just shows you what happens in your 20s versus your 40s. And in your 20s, this is when you're ovulating, which looks very much like this other slide that I showed you. And this is when you're not ovulating. And in your 40s, this is when you're ovulating, and this is when you're not ovulating. So hormone flux in your 40s can definitely lead to much more brain fog, and the studies are showing that that's the case. And here's a study, a great study done on monoamine oxidase A. And what I've circled in red uh, are the levels of this uh, toxin. So just think of it as, you know, bad chemical in your brain. Uh, uh, and this toxin essentially accumulates in our brains the most when we're in our 40s. And that's likely due to hormone fluctuations. So they are, our hormones are going up and down and maybe we're lacking energy, we're more fatigued, maybe we're uh, exercising less, we're not, you know, uh, our calories uh, remain the same. So, you know, we end up with just more toxins in our brains. And so the good news is that after perimenopause, by the time we hit our 50s, the levels of monoamine oxidase A go back down to what they were uh, in our 20s and 30s. So that's, that's good news, but here's what's really important to understand. So 
here's the toxin, monoamine oxidase A, that's in our brain, and the red is, the circled reds uh, are uh, the levels in our 40s. So you can see what's highest here is actually in our thalamus, and our thalamus is uh, the portion of our brain which has this gray matter, and it regulates sleep, alertness, and consciousness. So basically, it regulates our brains 24 hours a day, <laughs> and we have the highest levels in our 40s. So it's no wonder that we get brain fog. Here's another slide that is showing you as well that in a woman who is uh, not menopausal versus a woman who is menopausal, if you look at the red, that's glucose metabolism, we are not metabolizing glucose as well uh, as we age. And this was a recent study where they looked at women before menopause, women uh, you know, uh, in the middle of menopause, and then the women, women after menopause. And uh, the study itself made some, I think, some conclusions that uh, were not responsible. The, the study concluded that menopause is linked to Alzheimer's because there's a ratio of women two to one compared to men with Alzheimer's. And uh, given that the study really only had 43 people, I don't think we can make those types of conclusions. They also didn't look at the brains of men to show whether or not this glucose metabolism is also uh, present in men. But I think the, uh, the main takeaway from this study is that as we're aging, our brains are aging, of course, like the rest of us. And I think you could even superimpose wrinkles on this uh, on this slide. But um, you know, but I think the main takeaway is that with aging brains, uh, you know, we do need to take control and try and prevent this as much as possible. And so, in terms of brain fog itself, in our forties, it's I think uh, truly related to the hormonal fluctuations. Uh, after our 40s in our 50s, uh, I do know that a lot of women tell me that it does get better uh, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, brain fog as our um, ovaries essentially are declining in function and stop making those hormones. We're not going to get as much of the flux and uh, we likely won't get as much of the brain fog. Um, but brain fog, of course, can happen in at any age because we have these hormonal fluctuations uh, in our monthly period, and so it's important to track it and understand what's happening. And uh, especially in our 40s, I believe that it's important to to uh, actively and proactively take steps to protect our brain health. And so, um, as I always like to do, I like to show people uh, what I do, you know, in you know, in my brain fog moments. So, as I mentioned, I tend to get it when my hormones are surging up, which is actually right around now. And uh, and I don't tend to get the brain fog when my hormones are surging, are you know, declining down at the end of my period. So the first thing that I like to do is just reduce the endocrine disruption in my body and the hormone disruption. And women have, we have six times the level of parabens as men. And that's because we use more personal care products, we put on makeup, we use conditioner on top of shampoo and so forth. So uh, something I've been uh, trying to do over time is just reduce the personal care products that I'm using that have preservatives, use better products, and uh, and try and use multifunctional products. So right now, for example, I'm using a uh, baby shampoo that's also a body wash, and um, and just by reducing the you know the uh, parabens, which disrupt hormones in our uh, in our bodies, we can certainly do a lot there. Uh, the other aspect of hormone flux and brain fog is that when I know that this is going to be, you know, that kind of foggy week that I will have, 
I will reduce uh, alcohol. Yes. <laughs> so alcohol uh, is uh, reduction. Alcohol reduction is important. And caffeine as well, although I live on this stuff. But um, the reason why those are important to reduce is that uh, they compete uh, in your liver in terms of the processing of hormones. The other thing I like to try and do is eat more vegan uh, if I can, uh, especially a vegan dinner, uh, because uh, vegan, uh, you know, if you're eating a vegan diet, you tend to have more fiber and you wash away, you know, excess uh, estrogens. And uh, the third, the third um, aspect of helping protect your brain health and you know, and essentially reducing brain fog is actually um, supplementing with antioxidants. So I've just started this, I think, more recently in my life um, as I've been researching antioxidants and brain health and menopause more and more. And Linus Pauling, who won a Nobel Prize for Chemistry as well as a Nobel Prize uh, Peace Prize, he, of course, believed in vitamin C as an antioxidant and he had incredible amounts. He had three grams of vitamin C a day, which is, this is 500 milligrams, which is eight times your daily recommended dose. So he had about 50 times your daily recommended dose a day. I mean, he won a Nobel Prize for chemistry and he also he also lived till 93, but um, his uh, findings in terms of vitamin C haven't been, um, well thought to be proven, but of course we do know that vitamin C is a good antioxidant. So something though that I'm uh, doing more and more is I am eating chia seeds. Yes, that's like a singular of my name. And uh, hemp hearts uh, as well, because these, uh, you know, um, well, first of all, this is for magnesium. And then this has magnesium as well as a really great antioxidant. And so I essentially, um, you know, saturate them in um, almond milk and then have them either during the day or at night. And so the chia seeds are really great antioxidants. The other great antioxidant is blueberry juice, something like blueberry juice or pomegranate juice love this stuff. Uh, I don't dilute it. I just you know, drink it uh, out of the bottle. And something that I call uh, my version, <laughs> my version of natural speed, which I just, I don't uh, actually have a bottle. I looked in my medicine cabinet and I couldn't find a bottle, but coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is our body's natural antioxidant and we lose levels of coenzyme Q10 over time. And I find it actually quite powerful. So when I take coenzyme Q10 myself, uh, that's my dog in the background, Bella. Um, when I take coenzyme Q10, uh, I find that it just, I seem to talk faster, I move faster. It's, uh, you know, I call it, you know, jokingly my, my natural speed, but I do take it when I know that I need, you know, a burst of energy. I'm about to, you know, have a big performance. I feel, you know, very sluggish, very foggy. Uh, and it is a, a natural dietary uh, supplement that I like to always have in my medicine cabinet, but I don't have right now. So, uh, so essentially to summarize, you know, for brain fog, there are three things that we can do. We can reduce the level of parabens and other preservatives you know, that we're ingesting, and that just reduces the level of hormone disruption. We can reduce alcohol and caffeine intake, especially during those days that uh, you know, essentially you know, we are, um, you know, we, are uh, we know that we're gonna have brain fog or that we feel like we're having brain fog. And then the third is uh, supplementing with uh, antioxidants. And Cheryl asked, isn't red wine an antioxidant? Uh, I'm sure that the grapes in uh, red wine have antioxidant properties, and, uh, and I won't go without my red wine. 
<laughs> but, but certainly on days that I have, uh, you know, I know I'm going to have hormone flux and I know I'm, I need to, you know, reduce that. I will reduce my red wine or go altogether without it. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, feel free to uh, write any comments down afterwards, and I will answer them on Facebook. Thank you. Happy World Menopause Day. <laughs>